Welcome to another episode of Cooking with Fire here at Fayetteville City Fire Department. Today we have Chef, also Chief Brinson, here to, uh, to show us a little bit about cooking some steaks. Chief Brinson, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Doing really well. Thank you. Good, good. What kind of steaks we got here? Today we're going to be showing up some, uh, some cooking skills on a ribeye steak for a lot of our backyard barbecue enthusiasts. Um, right now we have some good Angus Prime uh, ribeye steaks. We're going to go through and we're going to go through the process of prepping them and we're going to push on through and show you how to grill them and get you a really good steak. Awesome. All right. So first things first, um, go to your go to your local market or your butcher shop and try to get you a uh, good cut of meat. Uh, like I said, today we're doing some Angus Prime ribeye steaks, which is a really good quality of meat. These steaks here are almost about an inch and a half thick, so I prefer the bigger ones. They, they tend to cook better for me. Um, so you want to do that. You want to make sure, like I say, you check all your meat. Everything looks good. One thing you want to be concerned with when you're cooking is your cross-contamination. That's a big deal. For so sure. anytime you touch your meat with anything that you're using, you want to touch it with your glove hands, of course. I have gloves on. But never touch your rubs and your meat with the same hand. You want to always turn your steaks, do everything with one hand, draw, sprinkle your rub and stuff with the other so you cut out the cross-contamination on your meat. So you don't, of course, you don't want to get anyone sick when you're cooking at home or cooking for your family. Right. So right now, we, um, we're going to go through the prep stages of cooking these ribeyes. We've got a little rub here that I make. It's uh, We're going to post some, some the ingredients inside my rub. We'll post it on the site here shortly. You'll see it coming up. But for now, I kind of it's got some salt, pepper, some garlic, a little bit of onion powder in it. Um, it does have a little bit of brown sugar. I don't use a lot of sugar in my rubs due to the fact that sugars burn whenever you're grilling them. So we don't want to we don't want to burn our meat. So if you can just just when you're grilling stuff at home, just avoid a lot of sugars whenever you're doing your grilling because, like I say, that that's what causes your your really thick burnt taste and stuff in your meat. So, so what we're going to do now? We're going to take our rub. We're going to grab our steak and we're just going to take and we're just going to sprinkle the rub on the meat on both sides of it. Go through and just cover it really well on each side. That's a pretty thick. That's a pretty thick layer of uh, seasoning. Yeah. So, you know, normally, you know, you would. I guess your average person wouldn't know to put that on there. But um, I guess it seals in the flavor. Yeah, it does. And remember one thing too: try to ribeyes do have a lot of fat in them, which adds flavor. But fat also, the rubs won't penetrate through the fat. So, so you want to you want to make sure it's got some really good marbling inside of it, and it looks really well like these steaks do. Sure. So another key thing that I like to do, that they call it rub, because people put it on, they rub it on their meat. I'm a little bit different. I use rub, but I pat my meat. So when I come through, after I've got one side done, I kind of go through and I push my meat just to kind of embed the rub down a little bit inside of it. And remember, we're going to do both sides of the meat. So once we've got it covered and it looks good on this side, we're going to turn our steaks over. And don't be alarmed if some of the rub falls off because it will. And then you got to do the other side the exact same way. So you're going to go through. You're going to put your rub on the steaks. And this steak that we're preparing today, this is what I call it's a um, garlic butter basted ribeye. So as we're going through the cooking process, as you'll see as we go through this, I'm going to add some garlic butter to it and mop some garlic butter on it to kind of give it an extra flavor. So once we get the rub on that side, remember once again, the only thing I've touched with my right hand has been the rub. I haven't touched any meat, so there's no cross-contamination on this. So once we've got the meat patted down real well, we want to put it in our pan. And it's ready to go on, on the grill. So we're going to walk right. on over to the grill, and we're going to show you how to grill this bad boy right here. All right. So we've got our grill. Our grill is preset. We've got it set at um, around 500 degrees. So the main concern with these charcoal grills, remember, any fire hazard that you may have, you right. want to be careful with that. Make sure that you're, wherever you're cooking, you're on a clean area. There's nothing, nothing you can, the embers can't fall out and catch your pine straw on fire. Right. Make sure that you can't, uh, there's no pine bark mulch or anything around your grill. But notice also we have a fire extinguisher on standby. Just in case things do get out of hand, we have a way to <laughs> extinguish the fire if we need to. For sure. So another safety concern is when you're dealing with grills is heat. So remember the grill is hot. Right. Stay away from it the best you can. You don't want to be all up on it and touch as much as you can. But 
when these grills are running at such a high temperature, remember, so what we want to do is we want to burp this grill. So he's going to take the lid, he's going to lift it just a little bit, all right, and then he's going to take it completely off. You don't want to just grab it and lift it completely off at one time because what happens is all that heat that's built up inside rushes right. out and that, that radiant heat will send your eyelids or send uh, your whatever, your, <laughs> your, your, yeah, whatever, your hair, whatever, on your arms, you can feel it. So now that everything's ready, we've got our grill prepped, we've got our charcoal inside there, everything's ready to go. On right. the grill, we have half side. So we have one side that's got the coals on it where we're going to do our grilling. The other side does not have any. So this is, we have both direct cooking and indirect cooking on this grill. So right now we're going to do, we're going to do direct cooking only for these steaks. And we're going to do, we're going to do direct cooking for this, this ribeye here. And we're going to do it for about two, we're going to keep it on each side for about two and a half minutes per side. Okay. So Chief, what kind of charcoal are you using here? Right now, this is lump charcoal. All right. So I tend to like lump charcoal. It's petrified wood. It tends to uh, give us a really, really good flavor on our food. Okay. So if you'll throw the lid back on it right now. Sure. We'll look at our watch. We'll set our timer. So we'll wait for about another two and a half minutes right now. And we'll, uh, we'll let it go. Then we'll flip it over and we'll do the same thing to the other side. Okay. So now, obviously, if this was thinner, you cook it less time on each side, right? Well, and it just depends. There's a couple of, there's a couple, let me set this pan out of the way here. Sure. There's a couple little tricks to the trade when you're dealing with steaks. So, so a lot of people have a hard time judging how they want their steaks to be. So I'll tell you this, here's a little, here's a little secret for you, for you, for the backyard cooks outside. So if you take your left hand here and you, most people, when you're, when you're looking at a steak, some people like their steak medium, medium well, well done, whatever. You can cook it by temperature. Or if you don't can't remember the temperatures and all the numbers of how the meats are, you can go in and use this just simple little hand method is what I call it. So you take your left hand, you take your pointer finger, touch your thumb to it. Okay. All right. You take your right hand, you touch just the fatty part of your palm. All right. The consistency of what that that feel right there, that's a, that's about a rare steak. Okay. So when you're taking your fork or your tongs and you're touching your steaks, that's going to give you a rare. Okay. All right. So then you relax your hand again, take your middle finger, go to your thumb. That'll give you a medium. So okay. See it toughen up yeah, a little bit. It sure. tightens up a little bit. Same exact thing. Go to your ring finger. A little bit tougher. That's More medium firm, well. Yeah. And if you go to your pinky and touch it, that's firm. Son, that's like jerky. <laughs> that's right. You don't. Want, right. I don't know how anybody can eat a well done steak, but hey, if you like well done steaks, <laughs> you want that consistency <laughs> right there. Okay. Right. So that's kind of a little back backyard trick to the trade that'll teach you how to how to um, check the temperature and stuff of, sure. of your steak. So, right now we're going on about um. We're going about a minute and a half on our steak right now, so we've got about another 45 seconds to a minute to go. So we'll just wait, give it just a few more minutes. I've got a question for yes, you, sir. Uh, Chief. So sometimes I've seen back home, you know, some people uh, use a lighter fluid or something to start their charcoal. Oh, absolutely Sometimes not. it gets out of control, right? Yeah. So yeah. what are some ways to prevent that? You use a charcoal lighter, correct? So so what I, what I typically do is I use what they call a charcoal chimney. I'll sit right here and grab it real sure. quick. So this is a charcoal chimney. You can get it in any of your retailer stores. Um, so what this does is you fill this up with charcoal. Underneath it, you put some sort of newspaper or, or some paper towels underneath it. You light it and set it on the ground, and it, it does a convection inside there, which causes the heat to rise and, and light your charcoal on fire. Okay, I got so you. that's that's one way of eliminating even having to deal with lighter yeah, fluid. Lighter sure. fluid is very dangerous. It's a petroleum-based product right. that causes it can cause injuries. It can cause skin irritations. Plus, a lot of people don't like to taste the lighter food that, on their nobody food. Nobody does that. Absolutely. Think, you know? So this right here is a very cheap option. I think you can pick one up for $10, $14, $15 <laughs> at your local store, okay. and sure. uh, it'll help you eliminate that, uh, that, that lighter the food flare taste. Up. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Right. Yeah, yeah. We want to avoid that. And like we said, we do have our fire extinguisher here just in case things uh, did take a turn for the worse. That's uh, right. And uh, as you see today, we're on, over here on concrete or a firm foundation because, you know, sometimes if you're grilling on grass or some dry substance, it could catch fire. No, something could fall out the bottom or when you lift the lid. So um, here today we're, we're on something that's a little uh, flame retardant, you know, to keep it, keep the, uh, the risk of fire from happening down. Amen. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. So right now we're at about our two and a half minute mark. Okay. We're going to flip these steaks over. So Jamie, if you would, my assistant, help me here. If you just flip, take the lid off. We're going to take the steak. Smells really good. All right. And remember, we're cooking directly over the flame, so you'll just go back, throw the lid back on it there. We'll watch our clock again. Now, Chief, how long have you been barbecuing? So, 
I, I grew up as a passion when I was younger watching my dad grill. Right. And I always remember the times my dad being out in the yard and he was grilling and he would always have a little extra on the side. So when the kids come around, he'd give them a little nibble here sure, and there. Sure. And um, so I, I, we learned it from my dad. Um, my brother and I started back in about 2011 doing some cooking. He kind of he kind of took the adventure and started out cooking and I, and I piggybacked off of him. Sure. So I learned a lot from my brother on how to cook and how to um, how to grill out stuff. So Jim, we joined the competition circuit and started traveling around doing different barbecue competitions, right. and we're really successful with it. So it's, it's, done a, it's a really good hobby. That's what I've heard. I've heard that you a little bit famous on TV from time to Ooh. time. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know what can we say, right? I'm proud yeah, to have a you here. Celebrity in my own mind. There you go. That's right. That's, That's right. where it matters, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it, it is definitely a good thing. It's taught us a lot. Um, of course, every, every your family always wants you to cook. You find yourself spending a lot of time <laughs> in front of the grill. But but the biggest thing is is to make sure you do it and do it safely. That that's the ticket is to make sure it's safe. Well, I know some things that you cook a little longer. It probably teaches a little bit of patience too, right? It's not that's a, right. A instant. We're we're so used to an instant fix or instant meal. But as you can see, a lot of times uh, this doesn't take long. But the preparation takes a little while. Getting the grill ready, getting the charcoal ready. It takes a little while, even though we might be cooking for five to six minutes. Absolutely, right. absolutely. And the, the steak, steak's a quick cook. It tends sure. to cook really quickly. So the total cook time on these, like I say, is two and a half minutes per side to get your good base. And then we'll put it on the indirect side for a little bit. Sure. That's when you'll see us, we'll start basting our garlic okay. butter on top of it. All right. And we'll go from there. And then at that point, um, it'll probably go for another I'll say we'll look at it. We'll just monitor the temperature okay. of the steak while we go sure. through it, and uh, just to see how it turns out. All right. So what I'm looking for is a is a more of a a rare, medium rare style steak. Right. That's seems, how seems I like to be my better. steak. So it seems to add more flavor. So I'm looking at the internal temperature of this steak. I'm gonna probe it with a thermometer okay. here a little bit, just so you guys can see it. And I'm gonna, it's gonna be around 130, 135 All right. degrees. And then um, we'll, we'll, we'll do one at that, and then we'll do one a little bit higher temperature just, okay. to, just to show some consistency um, of the meat. And then we'll, uh, we'll pull it off, and we'll cut it, and we'll let you try it. We'll see Sound, how it goes. Uh, that sounds good to I me. I think you won't be disappointed. I, I don't believe I will be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've got just a couple more minutes to go here. And uh, we're going to wait just a minute here. So we got about... 45 more seconds 45 to go. seconds. And this is something you do really have to monitor your time because if you don't monitor it well, you know, you could go from that rare to well done in oh, no time. Very right? quickly, yeah. <laughs> it changes its state, especially when you're cooking at a high temperature. So right. we're cooking we're cooking at around 500 degrees. We're cooking around 500 degrees a day. So remember, like you said, you can go from a, a rare steak to a medium done steak in, okay. in around probably a couple minutes. I okay, mean, it, yeah. It happens very quickly with steak. So that's why we don't want to get sidetracked, right? You want that's, to stay, stay uh, honed in on what you're doing. You know, a lot of times, like you said, at the cookout, you have your kids over, your grandkids or family and friends. Sometimes they want to talk and play, but it's good to keep a good clearance around the grill to, you know, be able to keep an eye on what we're doing, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And another good thing is, too, is an unattended grill. Well, for so sure. we, this thing, you know that charcoal grills cause a lot of fires. That's we, right. We know that based That's off right. of the data and statistics in, our, in the history of the nation. So we want to stay with it. We want to constantly monitor it. So we may walk away from it for just a few minutes to check something sure. or to, but always remember, I've got a charcoal grill going right. out there and you want to keep coming back to us. That's right. So we're at we're at about the two and a half minute mark now. Right. So if you'll take my lid off, oh, yeah, we're gonna man. take our steaks. All oh, right. Yeah. We're gonna flip them another time over here on this side. Looks real good. And remember what I was saying earlier, there this is the direct cooking side, so you're gonna have flame coming up. So always when you're grilling, come at an angle away from the flames. Sure. Don't always go over top of it because you will singe the hairs on your arms. So let's let's take that, leave it like there for just a second. Okay. Put the lid back on it if you want All to. All right, sure. And grab. taking off indirect heat is it just like a little bit of a lower temperature, or what exactly? What exactly does that do? So taking it off the indirect heat, indirect heat takes the um, it takes the direct flame off the meat. Sure. So right now we've got the external of the, of the steak looks really good. We don't it, it's not burnt. Sure. We don't have a lot of um, we don't have a really thick crust that's hard to bite through. Right. So right now what we're we take it off that because that part of it's where we want it. And then we okay. take it off on the indirect side so we still get the heat. We right. just don't get the direct flame coming uh, up to sure. it. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So I'm using just a meat thermometer. You can buy a meat thermometer at your any of your local retailers, the same place you buy your uh, chimney starter for your charcoal. I'm using a meat thermometer. So we're going to probe the meat now and just see where it sits and uh, see what kind of temperatures we have now. I'm good to go ahead and take this off? Yes, sir. Thank you. So right now we're looking around, just depends, around 130, 120 degrees, 115. Right. 
just depends on the thickest part of the meat. So we're looking really good. About 120. So that's where we, we it's going exactly what we want it to do. So I'm gonna grab our I'm gonna grab our garlic butter. All right. I'm gonna come over here to it. So if you'll take that off. Sure. What we mixed up here is I've got two sticks of butter and about one teaspoon of garlic. So we've got that mix inside there. We've melted it down, and then I'm just gonna start basting it on the meat. Now, are there different types of rub? You can do whatever you wanted for uh, for the taste, you know, or not rubs for the uh, basting. Could you use a different type of uh, base? Could you use a sweet a sweet base, or would you would you? You could, but most of the time, you know, the thing about steaks, and most people get confused when you're cooking steaks, is that steaks you want it, you want your beef to taste like beef. For sure. So a lot of people have a tendency of trying to go in, and they'll make their beef taste like a maybe like a chicken leg or something with a different kind of sweet right. sauce or something on it. So garlic always complements beef. So, you know, so we do that and just... Does we, this go back on? Yes, sir. You put it back on there. Absolutely. So we'll stand here for just, we'll give it about a minute, minute and okay. a half, and we'll wait just a little bit longer. It smells really good, man. You yeah. can smell that garlic. It's going to go really well here. And what we'll do the next time around is same exact thing because we're cooking at high temperatures. When you take the lid off, remember to lift it up just a little bit and burp right. it and then take the lid off okay. so you don't get that heat coming sure. back on you. And then uh, we'll flip the steak over and we'll do the exact same thing to All the right. other side. Sounds great. Yep. It's a really nice day out here, you know. Beautiful day. Does, Beautiful day. Does weather play a big part into it? So if it's cooler, um, does that change anything? Like if you're barbecuing, say, in November? Not really. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't change the the, the meat itself. Okay. It'll, it'll it'll change you, of course. Always of course. Yeah, up for right. the elements. Make sure you're right. you're out there. It may be warm around the grill, but as you push away from the grill, it, it gets a little cooler. But but as in the meat, the, the grill is doing its thing. Most of your most of your charcoal grills are insulated enough okay. to where they'll hold in the temperature. Okay, so. yeah. And plus, with a steak, you're not doing a long cook, so you're not worried about maintaining that 500 degrees for six or seven hours. Right. You right. really want it for a good 15, 20 okay. minutes. All right. Yeah. You just let me know when, Chief, and I'll okay. take that. Let's go ahead and take it off. You'll burp, burp it first, and then we'll, there you go. Then we'll take it off real slow. And just flipping them again. Just flipping them one more time. And then what we'll do is we're just going to continue to baste it. Man, it smells amazing. Yeah, this is a really, really good recipe. Very, very easy to make. Anyone can do it at home with a good charcoal grill. So if you would, just throw the lid back on it. Sure. So we'll give it another minute. And what we're gonna do is one more flip. So what we, once Jamie takes the lid off again, we're going to flip it over. We're going to base it one more time. And then once we do that, we'll pull it off. We'll check the temperature again. Okay. We'll pull it off. We'll carry it to the cutting board and we'll slice it up. And we'll, we'll dig into this baby. See sounds how it great. Out. It sounds great. Absolutely. It smells amazing. I mean, it really does. It really starting to feel like, you know, springtime or summertime right here now. So, uh, you know, that's what every, every good summer or every good vacation, you always think about a good, you know, good time grilling out or and there's so many things you can grill, but uh, obviously my favorite probably is steak. Yeah, uh, to have steak. And steak's very quick. Um, the biggest thing is is to get a good cut of meat. Like if you go to your if you go to the meat the meat department <laughs> right. or you go to um, you go to your butcher, get ask them for a really good cut of sure. meat. You may spend you may spend three or four dollars more per sure. steak, but it's worth it when you cook it. You know, oh, your, for sure. your high end quality meat's going to give you a better product in the end. It's kind of, kind of what you're looking for. Right. And the good thing, like I say, we're cooking at very high temperature. We're, we're a little over 500 degrees right now, but we don't have to worry about it. If we walked away from it now for around, let's say we had to walk away because the phone rang or the cell phone or the kid ran away, right. we're cooking indirectly. So remember, we right. don't have to worry about our food burning right now because right. it's not directly over the heat, over, over the uh, coals. So and that's a really good technique. You know, I was wondering, I seen you uh, lay out the charcoal and you had half and half. He said, you know, I said, maybe it's indirect heat, but you know, it shows it really works. And if you're, if you're, cooking directly over the flame, the more time you spend over top of it, the increased chances of you getting burned. Right. So, cause, cause you're gonna be over top of that flame. This butter is very, right. when it hits that stuff, it's like grease, it flares right. up. So you wanna be away from the, um, the flame whenever For you do sure. it. So we'll take it over one more time. All right. Oh yeah, oh that's really good. So 
So now that we flicked them one last time, we're going to do a good base on this side. All right. So if you'll throw the lid back on it, we'll let it do its thing for just a minute. I'm going to get my thermometer out again. Okay. And we're going to go through and probe it. Kind of see what we're working with here. So if you you'll ready? take it off. There you go. Good job. Good job. Looking good. So I'm I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do something, Jamie. I'm, I'm gonna, okay. So so I've probed and I, I know what the temperature of these steaks are. So okay. I want what I want you to do is kind of walk on my side, kind of switch okay. places with me. Take sure. the tongs. Yes, All sir. Right. Take this steak right here and remember the, the thumb method sure. I was teaching you. Kind of take your prongs and just touch it. You can push it a little harder if you want to. You feel the consistency of that? Medium rare. About medium rare, yeah. rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then move all the way here to this side. It's a little bit tougher. A little bit tougher. So right? it's, it's more medium. So right. that's how you can judge it. For sure. Just that's, like what you showed. You know exactly. What you so if you don't have a meat thermometer at home, right. that, that'll give you the thing. So like I said, when you touch down on it and it's giving you that that really soft center, sure. the inside's probably going to be pink. So we'll throw the lid back on it because we're, we're, we're getting some flames coming up there. Okay. But the inside of it's going to be pink. Okay. And some people don't like pink. So. Right. So if you if you do it that method, you'll know how we laid them out. We got more of a rare steak, more of a medium, medium, rareish, and then on this end is more of a, like a medium well probably right. to this end. Right. So. Sounds good. Let All me right. pass those back to the chef. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I think you did a good job. You look really good holding that. What can I say? So I'm going to grab a pan. We're going to take those things right. off, and we're going to fix them to lay it out here. I'll let you grab that yes, pan. Sir. Smells really good, man. It smells really good. So, Chief, I see you moving a bunch of things around. It must be getting close to time to taste some food, it's right? It's time to eat, brother. You know what? That's, that's the best part of the me. meal. Let so me know. You'll burp it out? Yeah. All right. There you go. We'll grab these bad boys. All right. Man, they look amazing. How many ounces would you think each of these are? Um, probably around 14. But good. Yeah. You leave this off, put you the put, on. You put the lid back on it. All we'll right. walk over to the prep table. Okay. I'll follow you. Yep, you got sir. the food, so. Uh-oh. There's probably going to be a lot of people following us with the food. I think they're already uh, coming in. So what we'll do, we'll keep our butter over here with us. I like to keep a little bit of rub on hand also. So on my cutting board, what I like to do is I like to take it and I like to paint a little bit on it. On the sides right here. And what's that do, just for extra flavor? Or? Well, what it's going to do is, is whenever we um, get a little bit of rub, and sprinkle inside of it. Then when we cut this steak, set this out of the way here so I can get you some off. Sure. Give you an area. If you would, rip off a piece of that aluminum foil, Jamie. Sure. And set it right here. And uh, we'll go in and uh, that'll give us a place to uh, to lay our steaks down when we cut them. Right so we got it here. get blinded from the uh, man I'll tell you what these right. things are looking good oh they look great man it smells great and remember ribeyes tend to have a little bit of fat in them so I mean a lot of people don't want to bite down and bite into that fat So we'll do the rest of them exactly like that. But then what I do is I take this steak All right. and I kind of go through it. And I'll kind of rub it into all of its juices. It looks really good. Steak actually goes a long ways, you know. I mean, 
you wouldn't think it would, but it, it does. It does. It really does. And when we, when you and I, we're, we're both big boys. We love to eat. So when, when right. we go out to dinner, we order a 16 ounce ribeye. You don't realize that, wow, we're eating all that food right there, if not That's a little right. bit more. With some sides normally, right? So I'm going to let you do the honors. All right. I'll let you try that out if you don't mind. Taste not it. a bit. Tell, tell me what you think there with that one there. How's that? It's great, man. Pretty good steak. Probably the best steak I've ever had. Oh my goodness. You're giving me way too much credit. It's really good. So we'll go through and do the same thing with this one. We'll slice it up. That's really good. And that was about, what I just ate was what, medium, you'd say? This right here, this is more, more to the medium well, probably. Okay. It's still real tender, you know, a lot different than sometimes what you would think maybe, but it was really tender. It's really good, full of flavor. This one here is probably the rarest of them all, so this will be more of your rare steak. Yeah, I can definitely tell. And it's, it's amazing how you cook, you know, all different um, levels of wellness right there at one time. You That's know? right. Just That's by right. positioning them on the grill and, and putting them to uh, indirect heat and keeping one a little closer to the heat. And um, you have, you know, all the way from rare to, to done, you know, well done. So, so we'll take nice. all this, we'll throw it back in the pan here. Uh oh, look out. A little bit of wind with this nice day, yes, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we'll throw this back in the pan. Uh oh. We'll get that wind. Got us. Chief, so let's really taste this babe right here. See what we got. Let me see. Great, man. Make sure it's. Mm-hmm. Really good. That's fit, buddy. That's good right there. And you've been you've been cooking this a long time. You know it, man. It's it's amazing. Good stuff. Well, Chief Renson, we really appreciate uh, you taking time out today and to cook these and prepare these steaks for us. Uh, Absolutely. Here at Cook on Fire, and uh, along with spreading a little bit of a safety message as we learn how to prepare a good meal here in uh, the big city of Fayetteville. So um, you may you may want to tune in at a later time. You can check us out online at www.fayettevillenc.gov slash cookingwithfire to follow all these recipes and the ones that we've done in the past. Thank you so much and have a great day again. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Enjoyed it. Yes, sir.